It has been several months since we have had a new video for you on YouTube. We have been creating all sorts of other mischief here at the office. And I apologize for the fact that today, two days before Thanksgiving, we are talking about such a unjoyful subject as surgery. However, this is due to bad scheduling and integrity since a lady called or wrote about a month ago saying, I'm going into surgery, can you tell me what to do to prepare my spirit? And I said, well, actually, instead of writing this long email, let me just record it for everybody and we'll have it out of the way. She said, okay, I'm having surgery in December. So I have procrastinated one day at a, no, I haven't procrastinated. I've had other priorities for one day at a time. And now here we are almost to December, so we are squeezing this in today, not because of the holidays, but because of one of our dear people who's going to have surgery and needs this. So, humor me. The topic at hand is what to do with your spirit, or through your spirit, or with your spirit, whatever preposition you want to use, when you are going into surgery. And as with most things sapphire, uh, guinea pig number one was right here. There are three different steps that we use in this process, but let's talk about the primary issue first of all, and that is that your spirit is designed to have an extraordinary impact on your physical processes all the time, and that includes surgery. Now, I had a pretty bad baseline. As you can tell from my crippled hand, I've had a bunch of surgeries. Almost all of them were under general anesthesia. And I knew from past history that I do not handle general anesthesia well. For every hour that I was under, it took me about a month to recover my brain. So three-hour surgery, three months with my brain pretty much useless. Not to mention an uh, ugly little interval when I'm coming out from under anesthesia. I am fairly legendary among the recovering room nurses of the hospitals that I have graced. However, we developed this protocol, tried it out on a couple of people, worked fairly well. I was going in for a procedure, and one of my team decided they needed to do it for me. It always feels a little bit awkward when something that I have pioneered is done to me by one of my followers who's not nearly as refined and polished as I would have been, but what are you going to do? So they did, and it worked. It was quite amazing. When I came out from general anesthesia in the recovery room, it took about two to three seconds. It kind of like waking up thoroughly rested in the morning. There was no drama at all, none, zero, zip, zilch. Woke up with a clear mind, retained a clear mind, had not a bit of the hangover that I was thoroughly familiar with from past surgeries. I was impressed, impressed with my protocol, impressed with my friend who did a kind of primitive job of using the protocol on me. Well, as it turns out, a year or two later, I had another procedure that required general anesthesia, and by this time, my mentee was pretty well polished, and she laid into it with gusto. Kind of overdid it, frankly, because my spirit took the admonition extremely seriously and trumped the soul in the body. After surgery, um, I came to very quickly and clearly. Doctor came in to see me and my wife and was very shocked that I was quite alert and was asking some cogent questions. He briefed us, I got up, got dressed, they, I took out my cell phone and I texted my two off-site intercessors to tell them all had gone well. And they put me in the wheelchair, took me out to the car, my wife drove me home. About 20 minutes down the road from the hospital, my body actually came out from under general anesthesia and my soul clicked in. My soul remembers absolutely nothing of everything I've just shared you. My wife told me all that happened. My spirit was so 
intimidated by the person that gave it the lecture that it was not going to allow any mess up. So it took charge, brought me to a pseudo consciousness at least 40 minutes before my body and my soul were actually genuinely conscious. I was impressed, both by the procedure, by my spirit's level of intimidation from the person that gave it the haranguing. So with that promo, let's talk about what it was that I was harangued with. There's three basic things that we do when prepping somebody's spirit for surgery, and I generally recommend having a second party do it for you, to you, whichever preposition you like, and to do it across three separate days, just three separate instances. So the first module is very simple. It is dealing with the issue of spiritual authority, the fact that we have spiritual authority everywhere we are paying rent. The kingdom of God is completely portable with the human spirit. So when you're in the hospital, by any standard, you are paying some serious rent. From the time you wander through the front doors and you go through admission and you go down the halls, you go to the lab and you go through all of this series of different rooms until you're finally plopped in your recovery room for a day or a week. You're paying rent, you're paying high rent, and therefore you have complete spiritual authority over that space. Complete. Because you are in Christ, Christ is in you, the kingdom of God is portable with your spirit if your spirit is in covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. Now this is very important because of the amount of defilement that is embedded in that land. Let's talk about the operating theater just or kicks. How many people have died there? How much malpractice has gone on? How much suffering? How much confusion? Um, if I knew the history of the surgical center where I'm going to be whittled on, I'd probably scream and run the other way. So it's a good thing I don't, but God knows and the demons know and it's important for my spirit, even beforehand, to take authority over all of those spaces, pre-op, operation, post-op, and emphatically declare the kingdom of God is portable. No matter what has happened here, no matter what kind of heathen are in the room, no matter what, wherever you go, conscious, unconscious, the kingdom of God laws apply. And therefore, preemptively, before you leave home, call attention the demonic over the hospital and say, Hi guys, just wanted to alert you that I, child of the Most High God, in blood covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, am coming. And when I come, you get the afternoon off. Everywhere I go, kingdom turf, no intrusion, kingdom law reigns supreme, and all the defilement in the people, in the building, in the land is suspended during the time that I'm there. So that's day one. Kingdom of God is portable. Day number two. Very important issue. The spirit is not subject to anesthesia. It's not. Not even the tiniest, remotest bit. Your soul is utterly dependent on the body. So they stick some general anesthesia in the IV it goes into your bloodstream, and your soul is completely neutralized. You are incapable of saying to the anesthesiologist, you got really bad breath, would you take a mint, please? You are incapable of even thinking about the nurse, where did she get that haircut? I mean, those thoughts don't happen. Your soul is utterly neutralized when the body goes down and your spirit is not. Your spirit is completely immune from all impact of anesthesia. It is completely conscious, has complete dominion and authority while the body is taken out. However, most of the time your spirit does not exercise that authority because nobody has released it to do that. I have a good friend of mine by the name of Dr. David Levy. 
He is a premier neurosurgeon and wrote a book entitled Gray Matter that I would recommend to any believer. It's an extraordinary tale, not of neurosurgery, but of Almighty God fathering somebody who was looking for mothering and God met him in a different key of music. But that's another story. David, before he met me, had no knowledge of the human spirit. I mean, he knew we were body, spirit, soul, and body, but th there was no theology of the human spirit. He had no idea what he was capable of. But he was operating in a fairly routine surgery on a woman, I believe, if I remember the story correctly, deep into the process, and the woman is completely under general anesthesia. He hears in his spirit, and he doesn't know he has a spirit, her spirit, doesn't know she has a spirit, say to his spirit, you're about to kill me. Well, he had no frame of reference for the spirit of an unconscious person speaking to the spirit that he didn't know he had, so he just kind of brushed that off with a bit of irritation and shock, kept on going, and her spirit said again more loudly, if you keep going with this, you are going to kill me. He still doesn't have a theology for his spirit or her spirit, but he is sufficiently jarred that he stepped away from the table, went into the adjacent room where all of the pre-op tests were and all the fancy equipment, and he looks at these pictures of the brain, rotates them different ways. All of a sudden, he sees it. He sees what he hadn't seen before and realizes if he keeps going, he's going to kill this woman. Well, that is an extraordinarily extreme story of the human spirit of the patient having dominion in the room, but it's normative. So you need to instruct the spirit of the person going for surgery in detail over the fact that it not only has the right, but it has the ability to monitor everything. When I went in for surgery once many years ago, they put a fabric screen um, across the front so I couldn't see what was going on on the other side because it was local anesthesia. Well, I just so happened that the light overhead was positioned just so that I could see a reflection to it. After about 10 minutes, they caught me doing that and they changed it. They didn't want me to see the surgery. The spirit has the ability to go on the other side of the screen and to see what's going on down there. The spirit has the right and the ability to talk to any doctor, any nurse in the room, to tell them the equipment is malfunctioning, to tell them whatever needs to be said. And the spirit of the patient has the ability to shout loudly enough to get the attention of a hardcore heathen who doesn't know he has a spirit and doesn't believe that person has a spirit. I'm just saying. You need to authorize, legitimize, empower the human spirit to take charge of the process, everybody in the room, to shout as loud as you have to shout to keep things from going haywire. So, day one, kingdom of God is portable, you're paying high rent, leverage it. Day two, the spirit is completely immune to general anesthesia or any other kind of anesthesia, take charge of everybody in the room. Day three, post-surgery. One of the, the single biggest problem after surgery is swelling because you have cut so many blood vessels and there's so much trash and debris down there and the blood vessels aren't capable of exporting the trash and when you get the swelling there's this cascade of problems that goes with it. The secondary problem is pain because most pain medication has a downside. So we instruct the spirit before surgery that as soon as surgery is over, the spirit needs to vigorously accelerate the repair of the capillaries in the area of the incision. Rather than avoiding that place that's been traumatized, the spirit needs to micromanage the process to scavenge the body for the amino acids and other resources needed to accelerate the healing process and see to it that those capillaries are rebuilt extremely quickly 
so that the waste products can be taken out, processed by the organs that do that, so that there's minimal swelling. At the same time, the spirit needs to work with the nerves to calm the pain that is there from all the nerves that have been severed and to begin the process of regrowing the nerves to energize that new tissue, etc. Simple instructions. And we assure the spirit that even though it has never done that before, it was designed to do that. And I reference Psalm 139. Every day ordained for me was written in your book before one of them came to be. So God knew before the foundation of the world that you were going to have surgery sometime early in December. He knew when, where, who the players were, all of that kind of stuff. And your spirit comes preloaded with all the apps that you need to make it all the way through life with excellence. So somewhere in the spirit is all of the skill set necessary to repair capillaries and the nerves after surgery. And it is totally appropriate for you, the human spirit, to ask the Holy Spirit to kind of help you do a search in your vast library of preloaded apps that came from eternity so that you can find that app, open it, and do an extraordinary job the first time. Two stories. One story was of a lady that had serious back problems like serious. She put off surgery as long as she could. She was in extraordinary pain, even with the pain meds. Went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you know, this is going to be tough. Um, at best, you'll get 50% relief from the pain, and we can't even promise that. It was going to be two surgeries. I think they went through the front one day. A couple days later, they went through the back. Rather intense. Did the surgery. After, and this lady had all the spirit prep. A couple of weeks post surgical, she came back for her follow up, and the surgeon looked at her incisions in amazement and said, You look like you're six weeks post op, and she was only two, because her spirit had radically accelerated the pace of healing. As it turns out, the surgery was extraordinarily effective. Last I heard from her a few years ago, she was not on any pain meds. She was not in pain. She could do most normal household stuff. She wouldn't want to pick up a 40-pound grandchild and toss him in the air. But barring the outer edges, she is leading a normal life because her spirit coached the spirits of the surgeons while they were doing that work. So that's a great story. I'm going to close with an awesome story have a friend who came down with a brain tumor. That's not the awesome part. After all the tests were done, there was surgery. And her mama is beyond tenacious. Her mama knew about the human spirit. Her mama knew how to pray. And her mama just leaned into this and gave her spirit every kind of lecture her spirit has ever had or ever needed. Surgery went well, recovery went well, she goes back to normal life. A year later, she has the annual checkup to be sure nothing has reoccurred. Goes in beforehand, MRI, then the big day comes. She is sitting there in the examining room. Her surgeon comes in, the one who had, did the, done, the, one who had done the surgery originally. The MRIs are up on the wall. And he looks at them, and he takes this one down, puts another one up, and he looks at it, and he looks at them, and he looks at them, and she's sitting there thinking, mm, mm, mm. this can't be good news. He's looking. Finally, he can't fake it any longer. This neurosurgeon who did the surgery himself who has a close relationship with this patient, who is studying MRIs up on the wall, finally gave up and he turned to her and asked, which side was the surgery on? Mama Bear had coached her spirit with so much intensity that her spirit kind of did the overkill thing. And an MRI could not find the trace 
of the skull that was cut out. The MRI could not find any trace at all of the intrusion into her brain a year prior because Mama Bear had given her spirit a whole lot of instruction and her spirit had acted on it. And her surgery not only saved her life, her surgery confounded the medical practice. God has designed our spirit to walk in dominion. God has specifically designed our spirit to walk in dominion in the medical arena. We have only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to be discovered, to be known about the whole arena of the interface of the spirit and the body. But for now, in terms of surgery, the kingdom of God is portable. Exercise dominion everywhere you go. The spirit is not subject to general anesthesia. Take control of everybody in the room. And the spirit is capable of vastly accelerating repair, especially of the capillaries and the nerves to make healing extraordinarily different than when the body has to operate alone.